Good morning and welcome back to The Morning Connection. Your hosts, Minette Lawrence and Percival Palmer have been joined by a very special guest. Welcome, Mr. Patterson. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, sir. Good Mr. Morning. Patterson, the farmer. <laughs> oh, you should say Farmer Pat Farmer <laughs> Patterson. Farmer <laughs> Patterson. Yes, welcome, sir. Glad to have you in person. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, so um, we started a conversation on Tuesday, yes. and you so graciously, con- graciously and kindly consented to come in person. And I know there are many questions that we want to go below go beyond the political talk to the real thing in terms of implementation and so um we were talking about leadership this morning in terms of how important leadership is because it is the beginning and the end of success in person's life how do you feel about that absolutely leadership is critical um in in any given society you need to have someone Mm -hmm. who's able to set a clear vision and who's able to bring people together, um, organize, and achieve the objectives that will uh, push us forward as a nation, as a group, as an organization, whatever it is. And so I think leadership is critical. And for you to be an effective leader, because right? there are good leaders and bad leaders. You have leaders who can lead you to something bad and something good. Mm-hmm. I think you're interested in those that will lead us to something good. Going by in high school, the yes. guy who would get everybody getting in trouble and he was a Absolutely. bad leader but yes. but it seemed like you were a good leader when you were in high school because you were a head boy and yes. all of those different things but in high school I did a lot of things uh, I was one of those who failed the common entrance uh, twice and so uh, when I went to Spanish Town Secondary I decided I was going to change things and so I really got involved in the society in the school society uh, creating the science club creating the drama club um, organizing students, becoming president of the student council, uh, becoming head boy, and really lifting the standard of the school. As you know, secondary schools were not top rated mm-hmm. at all back then. So I tried to elevate my fellow students and get us to a level that would make us um, comparable mm-hmm. with uh, other high school students. Okay. Because you went to Spanish Town secondary and then you went to Stats. Yes. So how, how did that happen? Yes, yes. So. Uh, Stats at the time had this um, Isaac Henry. Yes, Isaac Henry. They had a program where uh, they picked the best of the secondary schools and gave them a second chance Mm -hmm. at the technical high school. So I was among those who got a second chance to go to to Stats. Okay. Minute. Oh, my turn. Yes, my turn. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So we, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to us earlier this morning. No, I was dealing with some fires, <coughs> dealing with some fires at the office. So oh, the office being personal office or political office? Uh, both. Both? Yes. All right. So early in the morning? So early in the morning, believe it or not. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. When you take on the responsibilities of leadership, you don't get to sleep as much as you'd like. Okay. All right. Interesting. Well, you know, you that that is... Uh, mm. There are some jurisdictions in which the health of the leader is as important as the finances of the country. Um, Jamaica has really not been one of those. I mean, our leaders can look as unhealthy as they like. Um, But what mm, I am assuming that being a modern day leader, you have a perspective on on health and and wholeness. (laughs) Balance, yes. Self care. No, not on. I know, I'm not punning. Hell not on wholeness. But you have a, if you have a perspective on wholeness, the Prime Minister, you can offer it too. I'm more interested in the wholeness of the person. Okay, so yes, right. yes. Um, speak to me a little bit on that, because today is to really look at some, some the, the softer, intangible issues that nonetheless are part of what makes the big things great. Absolutely. Well, I have been labeled as a health freak if you will Mm -hmm. i've been a vegan for a number of years uh, 26 or so years to be honest Um, i believe in the wholeness of the person mind body and personality or character or spirit if you will Mm -hmm. Um, so i strongly believe in building the total person so eating healthy thinking healthy and having healthy relationships are very important to me uh, they guide my philosophy, my thoughts, my actions. So even though I lead the UIC and I do lose some sleep, I try to f- find a balance as much as possible. 
I exercise every day normally, except for maybe on a Sunday or a Saturday, I might take a, some day off. But I work out every day. Um, I know I don't look muscular, but I try <laughs> to stay, you know, fit. I believe in family. So I've been married to my wife for 28 years. Oh. And it's one wife. One wife. Married a husband of one. Husband yeah. <laughs> of one wife. Yes. And uh, in, incidentally, we met in the eighth grade at um, at uh, Spanish Boy Secondary. Wow. So it was love at first sight, if you will. Mm -hmm. We became very close friends. Uh, she was the deputy head girl when I was the head boy. Mm -hmm. uh, she was my secretary in the science club. She was my secretary <laughs> in the student council. Uh, she was my secretary in the drama club. And she the mad secretaries. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, she really supported me when I did school challenge quiz, and she was there with me at all of the games and all of the competitions. So she's really a very supportive. So player. why isn't she here? Uh, she she actually had to travel today. Oh okay. So I could uh, bring her here with me, uh, but she's normally with me everywhere. Yes, and, yes. Um, she's a very she's she's a model of the you know that woman the Bible talks about. Mm, the virtuous woman, not of proverbs. Yeah, the yes. Woman, that's my wife, but I could not be anything without her. My mother laid a great foundation, mm. and my wife built on it. Okay. Yes. Oh, so you, mm. you have truly so become one. From when are we? Time. When are we voting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you believe in family, and that's a very Absolutely. important mm. part. I believe in. I truly believe in the natural family. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are various configurations that are being put forward in terms of what a family is. Yes, but I really believe that we ought to pay attention to what it means to be a family and what we transmit to our children and say this is a family mm -hmm. because there are consequences and while I embrace everybody's personal choices mm -hmm. we have to look at how our choices affect our children Okay. because you can destroy the mind and you can destroy the character and you can destroy our society if you don't have a proper family and the values transmitted from that family to the next generation. Okay. So is there a difference for you between embracing and respecting? Because um, there is a difference for me. So when you say you embrace everybody's personal choice, um, what, does that uh, what does that mean? And uh, think of it in terms of respecting it yes. and embracing it. Sure. Um, for me, I may use the word interchangeably yes but what really matters is that i may not be um in agreement with your choices meaning you wouldn't yeah, have made, the same, made choice. the same choices i wouldn't um i wouldn't endorse your choice i wouldn't promote your choice but i would respect your choice absolutely yeah. and and that's the kind of opening line now for us to talk a little bit about human rights yes. um a big issue tied up also with the rights of indigenous peoples because some what they say um we're going into animal farm now all animals are born equal <laughs> but some are more equal <laughs> than <laughs> others you probably would have read that that was a that was yeah. a text as a standard George George Orwell. Orwell. Growing up. yes right yes right, yeah um and and it's a sentiment that we see played out in the political arena all the time where there are some who who take to themselves just a higher share or quality of, of rights than they give to others. Um, <clears throat> you were arrested whilst protesting and promoting the freedom for persons to make a personal choice concerning medical care. Yes. Um, was that a difficult thing for you? The arrest or the choice of going out? Well, the arrest, the arrest is the consequence. The consequence um, of going but, out. But, yeah. but when you're going out, you know that that's a risk. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. Um, the, for me, the consequences of not doing it were greater than the consequences of doing it. Uh, I needed for Jamaicans to understand that not only does somebody care, but that they need to care about their personal rights and freedom. It is a dangerous thing when we go down the road where we believe that because somebody is elected, whether or not they're elected properly or their election represents a majority, we should not believe that any individual should have the authority to override our personal rights and freedoms under any circumstances. They may suggest, they may educate, they may inform, they may support, but they may never be allowed or must never be allowed to take away our personal rights and freedom. For me under any pretext even in war 
and this is you mm-hmm. know unusual because mm-hmm. you know some people think that if it's a war if it's a war then, then it's everything is suspended everything, yeah i don't agree yes. with that you never suspend the basic fundamental rights of human beings under any pretext this is why now you need leaders leaders must be able to encourage must be able to influence must be able to motivate people to action not use force to get their way so they can achieve informed consent Absolutely. Um, and the vienna convention and the other treaties that have come out of abuse of of prisoners and abuse of individuals under circumstances of siege or stress all point to the rightness of of that position but i i, I have to ask you this then did you listen to the current Minister of Health speak on the issue of vaccination for children and so on? Yes, I've heard a number of comments uh, from the Minister. Right, so you count it a victory? Uh, well, um, you know, it's good if they make adjustments towards their previous position. Um, I think it's important that we, um, generally speaking, that we make sure that we protect the rights of children and every single adult, and especially children, because children are very vulnerable, right? They can't make decisions on their own. So you want to make sure that um, their right to uh, their parents being involved in their decision-making process is being observed and followed. Mm. Okay. Um, yes. It's a, it's a quick follow-up um, um, in terms of the whole thing of vaccination and because of the pandemic, people say it's okay to give up these rights because we are trying to achieve that. So you are saying to us, wow, let's stand back and really examine it because a, a minister um, who I'm associated with came up and said, do not use our children as experiments. Do you remember that? Yes. Sir. So what's your feeling on that? Uh, well, you know, the, the statement of do not use our children as experiment, I would say do not use anybody as experiment unless they can give their consent. Right. Um, so the bottom line for me is this. Under no circumstances mm-hmm. do you take away the freedom of any human being. Freedom of speech, mm-hmm. freedom of movement, mm-hmm. freedom of association, and most importantly, freedom of choice. And so any attempts to um, undermine those basic freedoms mm-hmm. must be carefully responded to. And our leaders have failed to do that effectively in the last two years. They have actually push the boundaries as far as they can and we the people have had to respond now I am a little disappointed to be honest with you I thought more Jamaicans would have risen up what do you think accounts for that though because um, I have a view of it and what is your view of of where the average Jamaican sits in their understanding of the importance of these rights or even their knowledge of those rights I don't think they, they they, they don't I don't think they understand it very much I think Innately, they have a they have a um, a, uh, a feeling about it, um, mm-hmm. and they would they if you watch the chatter online, you'll see that they care about it. But I think there is a, a fear that has been instilled in them over the years that somehow a person becomes elected and they now have more rights and power than you. They're more equal than you yes. are. So because they're elected, even if they only got twenty one percent of the total possible electorate. They now have the right to override our views and our position. So there's a challenge there. I think also that our education system would have obviously failed our people because the people do not understand rights in the way that they should understand it. They don't even understand governance in the way they should understand it. And because of that, they can be manipulated by politicians and brought to places where they should not. Uh, not only politi- not only politicians manipulated by leaders by on a whole, by even by the church too. Oh, absolutely. And right. You're so saying that is uh, highly respected. No, man. But <laughs> <laughs> and that is the tension that a lot of us have to to face because yeah. I go back to the Genesis principle, yes. which we got freedom of choice, exactly. decision. Exactly. There may be consequences, consequences. but yes. at least you have the freedom to choose. to choose yes. and even. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to go off on a theological <laughs> discussion, but, but that's that, true. Yes, but you know. it, it's important that you have raised that in terms of for the public to understand and know. So I know a call on nine speaks to civics in school. What do you think about that in terms of it being standardized? So from you are six years old when you enter grade one, it is in your understanding in regards to the rights and the responsibilities here. Well, it speaks about rights, 
but then we never emphasize i think enough about the responsibilities that you have what what's your own um feeling on on that well it's um it's uh first of all civics in school mm -hmm. it should be a must on the standard mm -hmm. where i have a challenge though is Who's, who's civics? Who? What version of civics? What is the so content? Uh, what's the content? <laughs> okay. Because that's where you have the problem. Okay. We have, for example, social studies in school, and some will say, well, that covers content of, of civics, for mm -hmm. example, some of, some of it. But what you want is to teach good governance. Yes. Because you can put the theory of civics in school, and the student would then leave with an idealized view of what obtains, which isn't true. Uh, for example, many Jamaicans don't understand the amount of power vested in the Prime Minister currently. Uh, by design, you know, the power he has over the Senate, and, and he tried to even expand that power by having undated resignation letters oh, signed. Right. Right. And he, he also has power over the House of Representatives because every one of them are hoping for a ministerial post okay. and have to watch their, themselves. So if you, you need to get those nuanced part of the curriculum in so the students can start thinking not just having facts and mm. dates and statements and positions but understand the relationships okay. how does this affect that the cause and effect relationship so they can see you now how the governance model is working to either help or undermine their personal rights and freedom how it's helping or undermining their their economy how it's helping or undermining the development of their country and if a student fully understands the current political model they will see clearly why Jamaica is such a corrupt country and how by changing that model we can reduce corruption and make Jamaica a much better country than it is now. In fact, you have been doing some of that teaching, haven't you? Yes, we have. Um, and so I want you to explain what you've been doing because I did ask you before how do you see the transition from what we have now to the, to the, the better model or, or a more appropriate model um, and this is in terms of constitutional reform and legal reform. So I want you to explain sure. what you've been doing. And then I would like you to say how communities or associations or, you know, anyone who wants to have access to that information, which coming out of your organization, how they can get you to come and do one of those sessions in their community. Excellent. So what have so, you been doing? So the UIC has come to be known as two things. One is we're called by people, the People's Party, and we're also called the Education Party yes. because we spend our time educating. So instead of having this fiery rhetorical uh, or rhetoric on the stage and exciting the people, we actually focus on educating the people. So we have walked them through, for example, um, the different spectrum of polit political designs. We have walked them through the history of Jamaica's politics and economics. We have tried to explain the connectivity between the different pieces. Uh, we do this in our online presentations that we do on UIC Liberty TV. Mm -hmm. We do this in our community meetings as we go across the, the country into different communities. And we have so far created now what is called the JUMP program the Jamaica Upliftment Monetary Program, where we create in the communities community capital clubs. And in these clubs, we have weekly meetings where the members are taught uh, things like um, uh, financial literacy. They're taught the civics that you're talking about. And they're taught how to mobilize to get action in their community, how to be effective um, citizens in terms of representing their needs to their um, constituency leaders, whatever category they may be. And so we're working through that. In fact, we're just now launching this. And over the next several weeks, you're going to see us in different communities, all 228 divisions across the country. Mm -hmm. all Talking about parish council? Yes, parish council. And constituencies. And constituencies. So 228 uh, uh, municipalities, divisions, mm -hmm. and um, 63 constituencies. And by the end of the day, we would have developed groupings in all of these um, communities, not just for political mobilization, but most importantly, for the knowledge base, getting the persons empowerment, for them to understand the economics of their country, how to pool resources together, how to invest in small and micro enterprises in their communities and how to use that collective power now to influence the outcome 
in terms of their uh, political organization, in terms of the community development, in terms of connecting the different elements, the churches, the schools, the uh, social clubs, and getting them actively engaged in building their community and seeing their community as an economic engine for their own personal development as well as the collective development of that community and by extension the country. So does it sound like 1660? It is, it is. <laughs> I know we had a... <laughs> we've been talking about personal responsibility, uh, family, yes. and then community. Mm -hmm. And I've been declaring that a tsunami is coming in our country that will shift. And that's what you yeah. need in order to shift what is happening. And quite frankly, that program which as you outline it is a program that can run outside of elections. Absolutely. That is not about electioneering. Yeah, no. And 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 when I look at it too, the a participant in such a program will be a blessing to both PNP and JLP. Absolutely. If absolutely. they decide that they don't want to vote UIC yes. and they get the learning nonetheless, mm -hmm. they can be the catalyst for change. Absolutely. Are you prepared for that to be your greatest contribution to this country? Well, my or, or greatest... You, or you pack up your tent if you lose an election. No, but I, well, I came back here 10 years ago, uh, 11 <laughs> years now almost, um, so let's think about it. So you've gone through two in cycles. Terms, in terms of packing up your tent. So, so I, I love your marbles and your ball. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> you know, you your marbles I thought you were your balls. We are nomadic people, so it's tent. tent. <laughs> but, but I want to share this with you, just to put yes. it in context here. So I left Jamaica when I was 23 years old. Okay. I came back in 2011, having done a marathon sprint mm. in Canada. Mm. Uh, from going there and not having a job, mm -hmm. working in a restaurant, a waiting table, mopping floors. Seriously, you know, as an engineer, I left here as an engineer. That's why I, I mm -hmm. heard that and I was yes. going to ask you about yes. that. Yes, yes. I left here as an engineer. I was assistant manager for instrumentation at uh, Clarendon Money Musk, right? Yeah, right. Um, very good job. My wife is the one who caused me to leave because she had left after we finished high school. She went to Canada. Her mother had filed for her. And so she became a part of the Canadian society. She got used to the wonderful mm -hmm. health care, the clean environment, the safe environment, the upward mobility. So she said, listen, man, Joseph, if you come here, knowing who you are, you will be president you in a are day. going to shoot to the stratosphere. And, and so I said, okay. And she said, listen, just go. And, and then what really moved me, though, to go and she, live? Well, she wasn't your wife at the time. No. Uh. no. Well, the decision was made at the, the wife at the time. The decision was made after. So here's what happened. So we decided to get married, as we agreed, because I told her, we made a vow to each other. We decided that after college, mm -hmm. we're going to get married. Oh, so yeah. that was our decision yes. that we made. And as, as the universe would have it, immediately we, after college, about a year, we got married. Okay. And so the question now was, where are we going to live? So I said, we live in Jamaica. And she said, I understand, but I want you to come to Canada. And I said, why? She said, well, if you want me to have children, I have greater confidence in the healthcare system yeah. in Canada. Mm -hmm. I couldn't argue with that. You know why? I am not the one having the children. Okay. <laughs> so I couldn't argue with that. So that's the basis on which I packed up and went to Canada. She also told me, though, that if I came to Canada, I'm going to do so well. Mm -hmm. That was also that was, quite that attractive. That was a carrot. That yes. was a carrot. So, the, yes. And then when I got there now, no jobs for six months. <laughs> I was on a miserable experience. I finally had to take up because I was o either overqualified or, or, or underqualified. Or underqualified. <laughs> so I took a job in a restaurant, mopping the floors, waiting the table for six eight to five an hour. That was so... De and by the way, that was... After that, we end, up, we end up on welfare because she lost her job due to automation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. We talked about yeah, that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she lost her job due to automation and so we had to go on welfare. The most humiliating, degrading really experience right. you could ever have. And so I was determined to fix that. And so quickly I rose through the ranks until I became VP of Finance for the school board and Director of Finance in Government, um, operating a Canadian $2 billion budget and all of that. Mm. And then I said, honey, it's time. She said, I know. Because from day one when I came to Canada, I've been planning to return to, to return. Jamaica. Okay. So we came back in 2011. I don't know how we got to this part of the conversation, <laughs> but that's how we, you know, I came back. We so jumped to it. You was, were talking yeah, about the, jump. The point was, Will I pack up my marbles and go? 
if you if suffer a loss, suffer a loss. Mm -hmm. i've already suffered many losses coming back to and you and, and you're I'm here. Still here you're still and here. i'm going nowhere i bought 36 acres of farmland mm -hmm. and i am farming and i am working i'm an accountant by profession cpa mm -hmm. i still provide cpa services and i'm working to build jamaica one way or another i wished mm -hmm. that the two existing parties would copy all of what i'm proposing and do it in substance because then i wouldn't have to do it but i get the feeling that they're not going to do it based but on you see and and why i took you there is because um well some of us here have had brushes with the political arrangements of this country mm -hmm. and well i for one came to the conclusion that you can be just as impactful working outside with the people because if you change the minds of the people then you influence the quality of the decisions they make and then we don't have to be in politics we can just work at the first stage creating the good idea and watch it run its course we got the signal for a break so i think we need to take our break and then we return our guest is mr joseph patterson visiting with us for the second time this week highly unusual even for us but we're pleased to have him and to know that the conversation we began on tuesday has ignited a lot of interest and we're trying to bring it a little closer to fulfillment today please stay with us we'll be right back Welcome back to the Morning Connection and again to our listeners who are on air and online. I say a hearty good morning. Jasmine Powell. Jasmine Powell is ready to vote for the UIC, by the way. Good morning to you. I'll just let Mr. Patterson know. Jasmine Powell says Mr. Patterson clearly knows and has experienced aspects of the problems and setbacks that a lot of people are now facing. He is the man with the solutions that Jamaica needs and she's ready to vote. She said vote the UIC. And we've got some words of love and encouragement for you out of the UK as well um, I'm trying to find it it's way back in the chat I saw it early good morning to Delroy Henry who's giving a UK shout out to you and echoing some of the things Earl Brown is saying good morning to you also and Conrad in um, Toronto uh, let's see um, I've got to catch up with truth to power but just letting you know that people are listening and are interested um, I asked you before the break whether this initiative that you've launched, Jump, Jump um, I like it. I like it. whether it will continue um, beyond just electioneering. And of course, I, I said to you also during the break that many Jamaicans are so accustomed to um, benefits being tied up with, with vote and politics that even a good plan might founder because persons are mistrustful of the intent. Yeah. Um, how are you ensuring that persons understand that the door is open for them to participate in this community-based initiative and that it does not really matter to you whether they end up voting UIC or they just take the enlightenment to their party of choice? Mm -hmm. How well, will you... We, to be very honest, we would obviously like for persons to vote UIC. That's However, right. yes. um, we're more interested in nation building. We're interested in empowering the individual, empowering the family, empowering the community. So the JUMP program is really meant for Jamaica, regardless of how you may choose to vote. We want the JUMP program to help to liberate our communities and our families at the grassroots level. It's a grassroots movement, a grassroots uh, program. Um, so um, if, if I were to measure the success of the JUMP program, it would be that we would have opened the minds and understanding of the Jamaican people so much so that they love, desire and work towards good governance and will accept nothing less. And that they will also see the benefit of collective economics, meaning working in a way where you trade value for value with each other and building an economy where we see the need to not only be um, consumers, but producers. to be producers. producers. Now, in fact, you are fresh from a, an internal skirmish yourself. Yes. You have survived um, a challenge in your own party, which I dare say brings truth to what you're saying. If you teach your people to, to, to think well and to apply the right principles, they will make the right choice. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about that, because sure. it seems that that is a testimony to what it is you're One doing. One of the things I, I did not do when I created the UIC, I did not put any clause in our constitution, even though I was pushed to do so, to protect my position. 
uh, I am just as vulnerable as any other office seeker within the UIC. Yeah. So it's not, you're not party leader for life? No. It's not uh, a gang of five business? Absolutely not. And I'm not the one, Dan, or anything like that. So the people in the party are encouraged mm -hmm. and um, empowered mm -hmm. to vote for their preference. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there are some who may have wanted to take over the leadership, but they weren't brave enough to face me up front. Yeah. and to say I'm going to put my name on the ballot and we're going to be able now to argue our position in a democratic, open and transparent way. Mm -hmm. So they chose to do it more indirect and then created a, a number of challenges. But in the end, the members, which is the most important. In the UIC, the members are the highest body in the organization. So do you have like what? Annual, it was an annual general meeting? Yeah, annual, or? Annual, well, okay. what is called an AMC, Annual Members Congress. Right. Where all the members come together and it's one man, one vote, no matter who you are. So there's no delegate system. You can't buy off anybody. You can't do anything mm -hmm. because it's always open to the members, even in the diaspora. So if you're in England or Canada... Or and you're a member of the member, UIC, you, you can, can vote. vote. So whenever my presidency comes up, or any other office comes up for the election, mm -hmm. you have no idea how it's going to go, because you can't control any delegates. You're open to the people, all the people. And that's what we want to build Jamaica as well. We want to get rid of the the opportunities for corruptions, even in the electoral mm -hmm. process. Electioneering. Yes. Yes, so we're very open. So the mm -hmm. jump program, back to the jump program, if we're successful. So did you survive by a wide majority or I a got, slim I got, majority? I got 100% of the votes. Even amongst the challengers? What happened is the challengers did not show up. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you suspect sabotage? They tried, you know, but <laughs> I, they did not show up. And I understand why. You see, truth is a powerful thing if it can be effectively communicated. And um, I don't know how... So it sets free. It sets you free. Yeah. Now, I am not the best of communicators, but I felt that on that particular occasion, because the attempt was so fraudulent, the truth was powerfully stated, and the members responded in kind. And um, I was elected 100% uh, of the votes, and um, all those who I supported in candidacy, which, which by the way, the way I do things in the, in the UIC, I focus on competences, mm -hmm. not on personalities, or, you know, personal friends. So if you're a competent performer in the, the party, the movement, I'm going to clearly state that so that everybody knows where I sit on each of the different officers so they can vote with a clear understanding of what my views are on the performance of the individuals. And I ask them to do the same of me, to publicly state um, what they view my performance in the different areas from leading to organizing to directing and all of that and um, I have no doubt that the members will always choose the best person for the job if we clearly communicate what the issues are and how we're dealing with and them. this happens every year every two well every two years we have elections for my position mm -hmm. and the other core NEC members but every year we have an AMC okay. where we vote on issues and right. so sorry AMC. AMC. The NEC is the and National Executive Council. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> nobody owns that name. <laughs> yeah, nobody owns that. Nobody name. owns yes, that name. No. But, but let me show <laughs> a question. Sure, so, even yes. as you've gone through that, yes. um, I believe in seasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. So nature you're gives us seasons. Yes, yes, nature gives us season. But even in terms of leadership, okay, are you party leader for life? No, I'm not. No, no, no. And you don't. Because some people hold to that. You mean, belief, you what know? you're asking is, are there terms? Do you become we, ineligible we after no, a cycle? We don't have term limits in the UIC. What we have is members' limits. The members decide your term. Uh, so we don't set a, I say, okay, you only serve for two years. I've been the president. I'm, I'm the founder. And I've been the president ever since. I've been re-elected now um, four times. Uh, and it's the, eight. Yeah, and it's the members who choose to do that. Mm -hmm. The moment they see it fit to place somebody else in the presidency, that's when it changes. And if I cannot perform at the level that meets their expectations, then it will change. Isn't that a bit idealistic? Because well, it's been happening. It's happened four times already. Let's mm -hmm. see if it holds for a fifth. <laughs> mm -hmm. For a fifth term. <laughs> <Because> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> You know, take Lee Kuan Yew, for example, in Singapore. I mean, I know people suggest that Singapore is a bit of a 
um, uh, they think it's a form of a dictatorship. But he has been elected 30 years straight. Um, why was he elected though? Because he made Singapore a powerful country, taking it from nothing, fragmented, poor. Right. Yeah, but you know, yeah. I think um, as even as we talk about innovation and freedom and individual choices and so on, there is the fact that people will continue to do If it ain't broke, don't fix it. People will continue in the same vein unless they are stirred out of their comfort zone. And there may be someone who could have transformed Singapore to the nth degree if um, Lee Kuan Yew just no, made himself Sarah unavailable. Plus. Sorry? Yeah. Did he use strong arm tactics? No, he didn't. Yeah. No. I'm, from my from my assessment of Lee Kuan Yew in Singapore, he didn't. But your point is is taken that, you know, sometime you need to have, maybe in your case, you're thinking it's, it's a check on how long you can serve. But the Fresh blood, time, let the, your family get you back for, before you die. That's so true. Uh, sometimes yes, it can disrupt a very good thing. Yes, that now, is what makes in the, case the of human Singapore, existence interesting. Yeah, well, <laughs> I am more interested in good governance than interesting so <laughs> you know Lee Kuan Yew Lee Kuan Yew gave Singapore good governance and Singapore is now the envy of the world and I'm sure all of us in Jamaica here would have preferred if we had let's say for example we had a leader like Lee Kuan Yew um, who was able to marshal all the forces in the country to give us a nation which is safe clean and orderly and where everybody can earn live and retire with dignity would all prefer that over simply having a term limit. Now, Mark here, I'm not against term limit. The current Prime Minister said that if elected, he would give us that within the first 100 days. It's now been mm. quite many more days than the first 100 days in 2016. So, if you make if you make a promise, you should keep it. I am not promising anybody terms, term limits. What I'm promising Jamaicans is good governance. And I'm, pre I'm prepared personally to work as long and as hard, as committed as Lee Kuan Yew was for Singapore, I am prepared to be for Jamaica so that we can mm -hmm. have the kind of Jamaica we want. Not the, the optics of good governance, but the reality of good governance. And I, I'm glad that you raised that point. The optics versus reality. Yes. Let's expand a little bit on that for me. Sure. For example, Jamaica is known and it is stated that we have this great democracy. Mm -hmm. And we, we say this with pride. But if you look at the reality of Jamaica's democracy, Jamaica in its early infancy, working with the colonial masters and working with the, the elites, got rid of the first political party we had, which was Marcus, Marcus Garvey. Garvey. If we had a true democracy, we might have had the Marcus Garvey party today. But because it wasn't really true, in 1944 we gave people, we claim we got the right to vote, one man, one vote. But did we really get the right to vote or, or did we simply have a situation where the powers that be gave us what appeared to be options while they controlled the options we would have? And so from then until now, we have had two options which has been underwritten by a segment of our society, the elites, the elites of our society, I call them the Black PSOJ Black. oligarch. So they gave the, this option, a veneer of democracy but not true democracy because the Jamaican people have not had a chance to vote for a third party simply because the powers that be have controlled the environment such that they can't really survive now the UIC is trying to buck that trend we're fighting very hard to overcome the obstacles and we're breaking through but the more we make breakthrough is the more they try to close the, the door which is understandable given yes, because what we have but what I'm saying is we don't have a true democracy because, for example, how educated are our people? In a true democracy, people are highly educated. In Canada, just one point, in Canada, for example, they have um, about five political parties or so. And every election cycle, there's a chance of an upset. We had a big upset once when the NDP, uh, a fringe party at the time, became opposition. Why? Because the population is so educated that they can really reason and think through. You can't buy votes in Canada. You understand? Because the population is so developed that it's hard for you to just buy their votes. You can't trick them either with easy statements and whatever because they can think at that level. In Jamaica, what we have done is to dumb down the population. We have impoverished the populations and then we've been able to control them so that a small segment does go out to vote but they're tribalistic 
they're easily bought and they're you know they, they get to manipulate the situation into getting what they want the uic says no let's have real democracy with an educated uh, population with an economy that is grassroots bottom up rather than top down and give people the power that they need to be able to participate in choosing who and uh, and what uh, they're governed by I want to um, introduce a sort of a fresh perspective on on the issue of democracy because you are offering a, a system of democracy as the decision-making methodology behind your government yes. so we can't bash democracy because it works depending on who is using it um, I've raised that point because some have called us a failed democracy some have said it's not a true democracy and and many conversations take place on the issue of democracy as though democracy is the fourth person at, at the table yes. <laughs> um, when when really it is a system that we choose to use and we stand behind it Percy and I from a scriptural perspective stand behind democracy as what works in the government of men our true government is a theocracy yeah. so uh, yes that is our true government but while we are here yeah. we believe in educating people and getting consent and and so on um so so we don't we don't bash democracy in and of itself we look at who's using it and why for your consideration democracy as it operates in jamaica is delivering sterling remarkable results to the people who are using it not in my opinion, no. We are not uh, the people using it. Yes, the uh, voters are not the people using it. <laughs> oh, okay, I see what oh. you're saying. No, okay. <laughs> that is why I've okay. introduced so it. The people using it. The people right. who are oh, using yes. it are okay. benefiting, no, and no. that is no, why. No, no, get you. No, that is why you. they say we are a true democracy. Absolutely. Because absolutely. they are using it yes. to yes. full effect. Yeah, it's working for them. Yes. yes, it's working yeah. for them. It is working in it's a powerful way. Absolutely. Yes. You now are yes. introducing a different way to yes. utilize it. Yes. Yes. And that's what I'm interested in. Sure. Because you are educating. Yes. And I like jump. Yes. Now, I need to have an understanding now of who your main, how you are selecting your main actors. Okay. Um, meaning they have the cabinet and the ministers and and you have a way now of selecting your main actors so that the way you use democracy will produce a more beneficial result to the voters right. how are you addressing that sure. well the first thing we need to understand is whether or not we are a democracy whether we want a democracy or we want something else the uic wants us to look at jamaica from the perspective of a republic mm -hmm. we want to define republic for you a republic is a state which respects the sovereignty of the individual and once you respect the sovereignty of the individual you build the rest of your framework around that so you want to design it so that the government protects the life liberty and property rights of every citizen equally and the constitution protects the people from the government that's number one mm -hmm. then now you go into the mechanics of it the mechanics now must be such that you have proper checks and balances in our system, you will have an elected Senate, which is separate from the House of Representatives, which, which, elected, is, which is also elected. To be elected in the House, you must live where you're running. So you, you cannot come from outside or be parachuted in. Mm -hmm. um, the Senate now is, is on a parish level. So every Senator is representing a parish, so 14 instead of 21. In the current system, Senators are appointed by the heads of the parties of the that parties. lead the government political appointments political appointments which makes them weak and ineffective and vulnerable and vulnerable in the uic system it's the people who elect the senators so now you have two houses which are fully elected but they have different perspectives one is at the community level and one is at the parish level and they're elected separately now your executive leadership your president is elected directly by the people nationally so he or she must have a national perspective and pay attention to the overall development of the country balancing all the different forces your vice presidents now one for each county so they have a regional perspective which which embraces a number of parishes right jamaica's cornwall middlesex and sorry so three vps very important to have three vps because you might have 
a VP wanting to get rid of the president knowing that they will step in line. But having three creates a bit of a balance because neither of them will know who will be selected if the, the president is no longer able to serve. Within this cluster of the new executive, the president and, and the three vice president, together with the president's running mates, a general secretary who is going to be chief of staff, and a general, the, the treasury secretary who is going to be finance minister, which is his core, so three of them forms the core, together with the three VPs, they now nominate subject matter experts to reside in all the other ministries. This is important, you know, subject matter experts, Jamaicans from anywhere in the world who have the skills we need. But you don't get to just appoint them, you nominate. The Senate then publicly vets them to see if they really can fit the bill, and the House of Representatives votes to put them in or out. This creates a kind of checks and balances mm. like never before seen in any country based on what we're doing. The big clincher though is how you finance the campaign process. Ours will be a 100% publicly funded finance structure where you finance the candidate by giving all candidates the same, the same platform, of, yeah. not the money, the platform, same well. platform, so that their constituents can hear them, whether them rich or whether them poor. So the rich man now have no advantage, and the poor man is not a disadvantage. What matters is the content that they bring forward and the content of their character. So now you have taken big money out of the equation, and you have put now the politics back in the hands of the people. You have set up the proper checks and balances, and you have now created a true republic with a constitution which protects their rights under all circumstances, regardless of the leader that you put in charge. All right. I think you deserve a break after that one. And it's also time for the station break. So um, we're going to shift gears a bit because we now have... And my beautiful friend <laughs> from a very long time. She's not hearing you. She's not, she not hearing me at all. She's not even looking at you. Hello? <laughs> well, we're going <laughs> to... We are going to welcome Winsome Callum to the table in a short while when we return from the break. And this is big business because how we treat with energy, the cost of it, the management of it, and our knowledge with Mr. Patterson has been speaking a lot about the need for consumers, for voters, for citizens to be better educated on all aspects of their affairs so we can make the right choices. And thankfully, we have Winsome who's going to join us after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. This is The Morning Connection. Welcome back to The Morning Connection. We are getting into the, yeah, we're kind of getting into the, the last hour of the morning and we were just so enlightened by the contribution from Miss Callum who I tell you I don't think there's anything about JPS anything important about JPS that she doesn't have some knowledge and information on so I mean right away I'm thinking oh I can switch to being a prepaid customer yes. set my limit and then Watch let the family it. fall in line with the consumption that is that's great power to have so this is now um we're, we're going to continue in the vein where we left uh, mr patterson he had outlined republic. the the republic on paper um but you know all of the good plans that we lay on paper can come to naught once man starts to move pieces around or you know how it is you have your beautiful design and when it goes live on the street it takes on a whole different shape and color and for us as citizens the the great fear is out of control corruption or abuse of power and so on and so forth we've just gone through on the morning connection we did um a review of the legislative framework and the the main piece for um whistleblowing uh, which is, of course, the protected disclosure of information. We also looked at the Integrity Commission. There are some anti-corruption agencies already in the field. What would you keep? What would you throw out? How would you seek to contain abuse of power in your republic? Absolutely. I think we have, we have made the situation more complex than we need it to be. So we have created all of these um, commissions and so on. If you think about it, what are the... What are the real issues in life? It's about anybody using force or fraud to get their way. That's the two things. You either use force, which is you know, a form of theft or violence, mm -hmm. or fraud to get your way. Why don't we make sure that that is encoded in law right across the board? Teach our children. Um, hold ourselves, hold our police officers, or nurses, or teachers, or politicians, our citizens accountable. You are not allowed to engage in force or fraud to have your way. 
So no special treatment. Whether you're a politician or you are a street vendor, if you use force or fraud to try to achieve your objective, you're offside and you're criminalized as a result of that and you're charged. Or we can set up more and more commissions, hire more people, create more offices, use more AC, produce more paper, <laughs> and at the end of the day, we're still where we started. So I, so I do understand the, yes. the principle and the fear of it, but um, you've, you would no doubt have had to look at what does the, 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 the public sector look like in terms of yes. the 70 agencies under one ministry and, and so on and so forth. Have you, are you paying attention to what I would keep, what I would, um, you know, not, and you don't have to name specifics, sure, sure, but sure. You, if you can give me the broad the outline, broad I, I, I would, but it, yeah. Just, just before we <laughs> sure. go along that, based on what you have said, if the republic becomes a reality in terms of he becomes the next prime minister, what if people are lose their work? I oh, that's know, if I he's would, that I, is if he's doing what I'm saying. You don't think about that? Uh, I would look at it that way. Okay. Um, here's how we should look at it. If you're running a company, right? Mm -hmm. What you want is a company that is well governed. It has good governance. Mm -hmm. It um, it employs people properly. Mm -hmm. It terminates people properly. It trains people properly. Um, it gives people opportunity to upgrade and to move into different areas and so on. Mm -hmm. The same applies to a country. You have good laws, good regulations, good structures, and then you hire people who fit into that and people who don't. It's a good idea for many more of us to be in the private sector producing than for us to simply be in a public space occupying. Okay. What? Right. You know. So, so let's. <laughs> <laughs> so let so us. But no. So, but based so, on what so, you have said, yeah. If we were to go, if we go, if we go to the public, it's going to be a smaller government. It's going to be it's smaller. Going to be smaller. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's going to cost us less mm -hmm. and gets us more, because the rules are going to be clear. We're not going to have so many tears for you to go through and so many loopholes for you to go around and so many public bodies for us to administer because the rules are going to be very clear it's going to be very narrow and very focused what you have is when you have too many gatekeepers you're inhibiting the economy from working well and you're giving some people an, uh, an advantage over others because of either their gatekeeper position or their connection know. to the gatekeeper okay. so we have to reduce the number of gatekeeping roles mm -hmm. reduce the number of gatekeeping roles reduce the number of gatekeepers, make the rules very clear and make and them simple. applicable, yes, and make them applicable to everybody equally. So for example, when I become Prime Minister, I don't like the word by the way, I'm looking forward to us having a president. When I become president, mm -hmm. I am not going to have any special treatments under the law. For example, there will be no immunity in or outside of the Congress or Parliament as they call it. No. Um, I will not have any um, powers to prevent a person from being appointed or being removed because of my personal preference. It will be designed so that the checks and balances allow the necessary parties to intervene and get the job done appropriately. And I'm being very generic here in my, my mm -hmm. comment. Yes, because I, yeah. I dare say, having gone through what you did, you would not discount the benefit of having structures that prevent manipulation and, and that would Absolutely. insulate power. A veto vote on some things might become a necessity. Um, so I'm not going to hold you Can strictly to that. that yes, please. Yes. I, I do not believe a president should have a veto vote. But are you the people that elect Marshall? No, no, but no, go, go ahead and carefully. justify. So <laughs> what you want to have is the president's job is to bring forward in consultation with the executive a policy, a framework, a program, a budget, whatever you will. And he or she, together with the administration, must be able to influence the Congress or the Parliament or the House to vote on it. If all he has is a big stick to say I am going to veto something then you have undermined the integrity of the process let him or her carry out his role and function because of his or her ability to communicate to convince and win support as opposed to having any big stick measures mm -hmm. to implement I do uh, not support yeah. veto and, and then you have a return of a too brute mm -hmm. 
where I'm going into Julius Caesar, um, who who was was quite the, the statesman and the politician, and would have convinced the people of anything, and therefore his friend had to stab him in the back. Not prophesying, <laughs> just saying <laughs> that the <laughs> yes, because when when all else fails, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> you stab the man in his back, <laughs> and we have seen many instances so of it. But eh? but yeah. I do understand that you are speaking of the ideal and that in the run of things but what is life if we don't pursue the ideal uh, you know it's the uh, ideal fairy tale. Hold on. <laughs> it's the ideal that brings us the science that we have it's somebody who says i wish i could call somebody si sitting right here in kingston i should be able to call somebody in new york and see them face to face it's an ideal you know to which true but typically that idealistic individual is not sense. the president or the prime minister no, he's, he's, he's in a room <laughs> oh, <laughs> usually that that's idealistic that's individual yeah. is in a room somewhere charting out ideas yes, yes. and and a lot more Don't venal with, with more real. venal and, and corruptible I persons like are financing it <laughs> let's build we, we, have, we have we have we have gone through serfdom slavery forms of dictatorships and monarchy to the point of parliamentary democracy a fake republic in the US and in other areas and now let us Jamaica lead the way with a real republic yes there will be idealism involved and we have That's to have, we have to yes, have yes we're not discounting it so Percy and I are quite ad idealistic ourselves and, and, get we'll get to a theocracy. and get laughed and get laughed at yes well that's it. that is the end of things end of it's things. where it began it and it's we're coming we're gonna go full circle so we're moving with that and i'll focus on here yeah we're moving we're moving yes yes yeah all right so um I think I understand in in theory what you're saying and it's not disagreeable yes. it's just that sometimes you gotta put it to work before you can fix the yes. weaknesses yes. that emerge so yes. yeah yes. so yes. yeah so I'm okay with that um, on this subject of human rights um, and it touches on law and order too there's a tiny report in today's paper about a new clash with the soldier in Denham town head of the, the police association has complained about the militarization of the police force and there were these awful videos making the round of the Jamaica Defense Force um, serviceman kicking the woman using the gun and so on. It has turned out that the community is now and I'm not gonna say I predicted it it is just fairly it is just it had to happen if you behave towards the people in such a manner they're gonna turn on you so the community apparently turned on a soldier who was attempting to conduct a search of a resident at a checkpoint and he was attacked with a sharp object let's assume you are in charge of the government in another three or four months when things collapse and people say let's rustle together an election and the UIC wins what will you be doing one with the Jamaica Defense Force um, two, with the zones of special operations and the things that are already um, in train. Right. Well, first and foremost, the, the UIC understands the problem. Uh, the problem of crime is a top-down one, and we've been focusing on it the wrong way. We've been going bottom-up, where we've been harassing the poor um, people at the bottom who are struggling, trying to find a way to survive. Uh, we're going to focus on finding those who are responsible for bringing the guns into the country, which is not the man on the street. Those who are hindering the police from doing their work, which is not the man on the street. Those who are making decisions that have caused our economy to collapse, which is not the man on the street. So you're going to clean the swamp? Yes. You're going to drain the swamp? Drain the swamp. You will. Now, watch <laughs> me carefully on this. The army is not to be a policing unit it is trained differently they have a very different psychology mindset. they're not a mindset they're not trained to deal with civilians in a um, in the way police is supposed to be trained to deal with them. so would you keep so, them so repurpose I'm them do, I'm not repurpose I'm gonna put the army where it belongs protecting our borders so no guns for example should be coming in because the army would have been patrolling our borders would have also been managing our customs in the way that an army can intelligence and monitor so nothing can come in no penetration so that's the army the police now we have to retrain them so that they know that a part of their job is not just to serve and protect but also to respect so if you have the police respecting the citizens 
working with the citizens at the community level, living in the community which they serve, knowing the mothers, knowing the fathers, knowing the child, being a part of their everyday movement so that the people can trust them and report to them when they see things developing. Now, if you're not paying your police properly, then you have compromised them. Because when you have a police officer having two or three side jobs, him can't truly focus on his work, especially when those side jobs encourage him to compromise law and order. So we have to change the way we treat police by training them better, but also compensating them to, to be able to work properly in the community. And we must use community policing. It must be that the police is an integral part of the day-to-day -day life. They must be at the football match. They must be at the community clinic. They must be a part of the school system. The principal must know them. The students must know them. They must be able to help a child before he goes the wrong way. But the child must have respect for the police. And how does he have respect? If the police is treated with respect by the government, in his salary, in his training, in who can get access to become a police officer, because we have too many persons who are becoming police officers who have no business being so, because they don't have the right to empowerment, they don't have the right academic abilities and so on to be able to learn and understand. So let's make our police attractive so we have quality people in the police force. Let's make them community-based so they're a part of the community and let's compensate them well so they can be respected by the society. Uh, so remember now, you know, you've been elected yes. Prime Minister, even if you change it to President. Yes. And so time is ticking. You've yes. been sworn in and yes. Jamaica is looking at you. Would you dismantle the, yes. no the, zones, the, of special the zones of special yes, operations? Right. No soldiers um, on the road um, in normal policing work. They'll be patrolling the right. and, and, and And the men who have been taken into custody under these things, are you going to do something for well, them? We have a policy, you see, we call it a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, mm -hmm. uh, together with an amnesty program. Because we believe many of our young men have been misguided, even by political forces, into where they are. We want to give them a second chance, give them an opportunity to be rehabilitated. So I want to offer them, come forward, share with us intelligence and information, and we can promise you a better way out. Reform program and back into society, trained and, and engaging. We want to make sure that we get the intelligence we need to go after the kingfish, the big people who are, who are behind us, who you're not seeing. They're not, they're not wearing the pants dropping down and they're not walking mm -hmm. around. They are in offices. They are masterminding what we're seeing and we're left with the poor little boys and girls who have been misguided, miseducated, mistreated, and now they're going to suffer. Let's change the equation and see them as a victim and try to help them to get out of the victim status and go after those who are creating the victims and stop the bleeding that we're having uh, right, right now. I, I wanted to. So, you have become president, prime minister in regards to it. So, I asked you yesterday on Tuesday in terms of what would you do. Um, I believe personally that a lot of the things that government is involved in, they shouldn't be involved in. So, what do you think would be the priorities of the republic in terms of having what you call an enabling environment well uh, very good point the the key thing in a republic mm -hmm. is how it empowers the citizens by virtue of education, education mm -hmm. and by virtue of the economic model mm -hmm. so we want to have a bottom of economic model where we are stimulating growth at the bottom mm -hmm. making sure that the man at the bottom can easily access a bank account easily access credit mm -hmm. uh, easily access information from government about the economy that we can use to make intelligent decisions mm -hmm. uh, you want to ensure that you have especially in jamaica's case now we have to re-educate our people so we must have adult education mm -hmm. free of charge that is accessible for adults to quickly learn the things they need to learn to get engaged in the, in the society we need to have digital libraries that makes it easy for you to go on your phone as an adult and learn anything in the jamaican context not to always the us or canada or britain or whatever it is but you go on your phone you want to know about a b or c you don't have to call and wait forever on the phone to find somebody who gives you different information when you call back each time but it's there quick access to intelligence for you to make a split second economic decision that's going to affect you and your family so these are the kind of things that we want to do at the grassroots level our healthcare system change the model from being one where we're prescribing the regular pharmaceuticals the one where we are looking at how can you use natural remedies that's indigenous to Jamaica um, how can you live healthy 
to reduce your cost of health care and reduce the national cost of health care. Okay. These kind of things. All right. So what I'm hearing you, what government must do is education. Yes. Health. Yes. Security. Oh, okay. So those are the three priorities. So we can yeah. let go everything else and become a lean small government. Yeah. Being lean doesn't mean you let go anything, everything, you know. Hmm. There are but better ways to do things. Okay. So your priorities, yeah. because you see... The, as many to say, my, the way my brain works uh-huh. is how does this work out on the ground? On we the ground. have these wonderful ideals and vision, but you're saying if you were elected as the president of the republic or the prime minister, you have to go in as prime minister yeah, first, and, and then, then we change the, the, system, the right, so, pri- prime so the priorities system. would be education, security, health. Before that system change, okay, so we have to fix change. the constitution. Yes, we must replace the constitution very, very quickly mm-hmm. because that is a serious problem. If you don't have proper checks and balances, no matter what programs you try to do, it will be mm-hmm. undermined by the corruption which is endemic in a bad system. So, what you're saying in terms of our yeah. constitution that says economically, as we wrap this up, mm-hmm. the external mm-hmm. creditor is paid first. The external creditor is paid. Yeah, in terms of the, the first call on the budget. Mm-hmm. In, in the current system you're talking about? Yes, the current okay. system. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is that you pay... Your creditor first. Right. And you're saying... And you, and you borrow more from him at the same time. <laughs> 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 you he refinances yes, you. you're refinancing. <laughs> but our system is a little ah. more nuanced than that. But, but let me say this. You cannot continue to build an economy based on borrowing and empowering just a few to control the mass of the economy. Okay. You need to create an economy where even if you borrow, you're stimulating growth from the bottom up. So you want the average man in a community like Braze River or Silo or Balaclava, you want the so average like man here in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. gutters and pepper. You want to get down there. You want the farmer who has his one or two or three acres. You want him to be the engine of growth at that level. Mm-hmm. You want the lady who would have made the drops for her to be back in the economy, making her drops and having an easy way to get that into the supermarket. You want the fellow who is growing ganja right now. Mm -hmm. You want to legalize that so that he's able to operate legally within the proper framework and not have regulation that stifles him while giving access to those with money and power and for him to just work for them. So you want to open up the entrepreneurship market so every Jamaican, no matter where they are in the the economic ladder, they can quickly and easily get into the economy. When I went to Canada quickly, I found how beautifully easy it was. Things that took days and weeks and months here took hours and minutes there for me to get any form of permit, get any form of, of registration done. And I don't have to go stand up in long lines and wait forever for things. And wait on the minister to sign and something the to or sign. for the board to have a meeting and the meeting is cancelled. I go online yes. and I say, okay, I yeah. want to do this. And I say, what do you want to do? I'm going to go bam, 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 send. Okay. I wake up in the morning, email is back, you're authorized, go right ahead. I don't have to wait for the politician, wait for the minister. And that allows for quicker growth. Somebody said on your program, they wrote on the on the, on the chat. They said, let Mr. Patterson tell us, could he and his wife achieve what they did in Canada, in Jamaica, if they had stayed here? And the answer is yes, but probably not. It would have been harder, more painful, more difficult to achieve in Jamaica what we achieved in Canada and that's what we want to change we must make it easier for the Jamaican to succeed here the average Jamaican I have about have to be a money person to get everything I have three minutes left in this segment and I must ask you this so forgive me Um, you you talked about people having access to bank account Mm. Um, when you touch on banking you are touching on the interconnected world of finance and federal systems and swift swift yes. codes and IBAN and all the things which tells us that on finance is handled on a global platform not on a domestic platform I gotta ask you this are you looking to create what I'm now calling a people's bank where there is domestic control and sovereignty over how people trade at the basic level within the borders before it crosses into Absolutely. a federal system. We, we, two things, and yes. your point. Point number one, yes, we're going to create a truly robust internal banking system that allows us to freely trade with each other. But most importantly, globally, it's not true that we can't do better globally. 
Jamaica has put itself at a disadvantage in terms of the way it interconnects with the world from a banking perspective. Why is it that the easy things I can do in Canada, I can't do them here? It's because of our leadership, our management, our government. If you have good government, you can have a better banking system, even with the global connectivity. You can also bypass some of the global restrictions by going to alternative um, you know, banking arrangements, mm. uh, using different kinds of currencies and so on. So we are going to, we're going to a model that we call free banking. Free banking is going to allow the Jamaican people to have access like they have never had before. It's going to be easier and cheaper for them to do all kind of banking transactions on a daily basis. It will be a right to have a bank account, not a privilege. You're going to be, the bank must give you an account. Like how they stop in the UIC now. From but, the, they um, must have one. the reason I asked about the People's Bank yes. is because a national commercial bank, yes. a Scotia Bank, yes. do not answer to government. Exactly. And you Nor can't. the Bank of Jamaica. And, well, yeah, true. <laughs> so we do need a People's Bank. Yes. Um, and, and that's the area. But it sounds like I've opened um, something that okay. is too big yeah, yeah, <laughs> for, big for the minute that we have. Yes. But just. I understand clearly, and so should you, yes. that there are some very easy things we can do to make banking and a financial lot. transactions within the country easier. Yes. So you not stop because you have five hundred thousand dollars where you do with so much cash, yeah, exactly. and the things that are happening now that are happening now. Please stay with us. In in the next segment, we have the bee lady with us, and she's shaped like a bee too. But you would have to see her to understand. Um, <laughs> and she is our very own new marketing guru for the best family. Um, Karen Clark is sitting with us, and it turns out she's a bee lover, a honey lady. And would you believe it, Mr. Patterson is himself um, a bee farmer. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about, on the practical side now, how this transformation of agriculture can create and enhance the entrepreneurial and the niche markets that Jamaica can lay claim to. Please stay with us. This is The Morning Connection coming to you live from the Ligony Club. We're in the final segment. We'll be right back. Welcome, Miss Karen. Good morning. You know, I know you're not shy. So would you please hold the mic good and give me a robust good morning. Good morning, Miss Karen. Good morning, everyone. All right. Um, we welcome you to the Morning Connection Free Flowing Thursday where we just kind of let the spirit lead us. Um, and on this particular morning with Mr. Patterson in the house, he's, he's seated beside a constituent. And this is a bee farmer who is interested in knowing how this new government led by the UIC is going to bring um, wealth and transformation to the agricultural sector to those who are seeking to both produce for local consumption and for export because um, honey business is his big it's business. Big, it's big bee sweet business. Success. It's, it's sweet, sweet success. success. Yeah. All right. I think we're getting her back yeah, into this. It's sweet kind of success. Thing. Um, so I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Patterson, sure, sure, sure. because you had outlined how you see organic farming and the role that agriculture can play. Um, what can you say to our bee farmer? She needs access to money, she needs access to land, she needs access to market. Mm -hmm. All of which can easily be provided by a government that is well led and well managed. Yes, we'll and start. You are the government. Yes. yes. If, if, if we have a government, for one, the, all the crown lands that we have will be divested and available for our beekeepers to have their aprons all over the island. Um, we'll make sure that government doesn't do things that hinder the bee farmer, like for example, fogging without first consulting with the bee farmer and organizing to protect their assets from bee damage. Uh, we also would make sure that there's proper water availability because bees, believe it or not, they need water. And so you have to have proper water systems available for them to access. So good drip, drip system that give the bees what they need is, is excellent. You also want to provide modern education and training because there are ways to do beekeeping that can advance your um, apiary very well. For example, the very covering you put on your bee. Are you using a metal covering which will increase heat in the box or are you using a plastic covering with a gap that dissipate the heat to cool down the box? Have you looked at no. how yeah. what the current arrangements are in our system now? Are, are you seeing a gap course, in yes. how ready yes. Jamaica is to encourage and facilitate So in our system growth. right now, we do have RADA, um, hmm. which sends our own extension officers to whatever degree. Um, but the, the, the knowledge level in terms of modern beekeeping, there's a gap in that mm -hmm. area. 
um, the supplies that are accessible here, the importation cost of those, like we don't make those supplies here. So if we're not making it, you shouldn't have huge importation costs on the supplies coming in. because That's you're, government policy. Yes, you're inhibiting the beekeeper. So mm -hmm. you need to make sure whatever we do not produce here, make us competitive by reducing the cost of importing those items into the country. And you also want to ensure that you have beekeeping training sessions that are modern and, I, and i'm stressing modern mm -hmm. modern modern yes. <laughs> so already i see work for heart yes i see easing restrictions and tax yes. around um important inputs yes. um so that both of the training and the education can be handled by heart yes. would you keep rada i mean what do oh, you what think of rada as an agency yeah i think you know we need to move into a, a very different age right now of of um how we do these things so for example rada Rather, we need to move to an intelligent way of disseminating information. Mm -hmm. I talked earlier on about a digital library. It's important that we have a, a very free, accessible digital library with up-to-date modern information for every single sector in Jamaica, including the beekeepers. So you can easily find and, and get what is relevant to Jamaica. For example, our, our zone, our tropical zone, the temperatures in the different areas and space in Jamaica, what is optimal for the bee here. For example, what you have in Clarendon will be different from, say, what you have mm, in St. Elizabeth. Um, St. Elizabeth. Yeah. And, and not all of St. Elizabeth, some parts some of parts. St. Elizabeth. Yeah. Southern St. Elizabeth, different from northern, northeast, mm -hmm. different from southwest. So Talking about the microclimate. The microclimate, mm -hmm. and yeah. so, so on, yes. The ecology mm -hmm. that is there. So um, that is all knowledge-based, yes. and I, I hear you on that. I want to ask Miss Clark now, any of what he's saying would that have assisted you in your journey into bee farming what was it like for you entering the business well it still is a challenge uh we have issues like theft pretty your last name no I'm not there is the <laughs> nobody 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 steals no ordinary person yeah. steals bees like that it has to be another <laughs> beekeeper another beekeeper okay so you need more <laughs> honest beekeepers yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is that even if you do report it to the police, you have the expertise. Well, I mean, I'm not right, can I keep man, the microphone man, I'm not experience here. dealing with bees and why have I got to write about that? And okay, so right stuff. away you can see what he has said about people being better trained, more knowledgeable would affect everything. Everything. So that would be a plus. What about access to inputs at reasonable cost? Yes, uh, we need. We need um, access to we need access to equipment and stuff coming in. Funding, uh, funding for that would be great, and as you mentioned before, modern training. Mm -hmm. Because in our group, Women Bee Farmers Association of Jamaica, we do from time to time get funding, and we bring trainers from New Mexico and other parts of the United States and so on. We do use up a lot of the byproducts from the hive, the propolis. We make soaps and lip balms and lotions and hair oils and all sorts of things. But we need to expand on it. So we you, are known, yeah. Jamaica is known to be a country of samples. Oh, so, oh, that's a point. Samples, okay. because then when they uh, when somebody sees these samples say, and how orders, much, how much can I get? We can't uh, respond to that. Excuse me. But then, but if you are only able to produce samples, then we need to develop a niche market that if you're getting it from Jamaica, it's going to premium price. Yes, no. but there is another factor to that also. Now, the government does bring in. Uh, agencies through the government bring in a lot of chemicals mm -hmm. that's mainly used by the farmers now those are neonicotinoids those are nerve controlling chemicals for insects and incidentally a bee is an insect now when the bee goes on these crops takes it back to the apiary everybody dies so we need to stop that those chemicals from coming in the bee need to pollinate that is what carries on our existence as humans 
So if we well, kill in the Mr. base, Mr. Patterson is into organic farming, so yes. right away you can see where um, changing the kind of fertilizers very much um, so. would make a difference. All right, so it sounds like you want to vote. I want you to talk about though what you are doing tomorrow is is B Day. Yes, World B Day. Uh, there would be an expo, a uh, whole celebration. Where? Uh, at what at, uh, at Hope Gardens. Hope Gardens. Uh, Give us the information that people can go and become a part of learning to make more honey. Are we going to get free honey? You're going to get honey <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> We we're not able to even able to produce enough. Mm -hmm. Yes, we having a big challenge in in that. And Mr. Patterson does know that too. Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, we're I mean, BSweetJamaica uh, dot com. Uh, we're doing fairly well. We had a pretty good year um, uh, this year, uh, last year into this year. Many of our other Aprils around didn't do so well. I think the big difference is that. Um, because I kept a lot of forestry around my apiary, they were protected from some of the elements that affected other apiaries. And the way that we managed our, our water availability was very good as well. I found that our bees liked the fact that we placed a lot of water in good proximity to where they are. And, um, so the, the uh, bees drink water? Like yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And, and also, <laughs> here, here's, yes. a, here's a bit of a, that's a little manga falling. Here's a, um, here's a, a key thing that happened is that um, we did well because a lot of farmers were not farming close by so the pesticides and, ah, and stuff did which, not affect us as much and it affected yes. you very much so a lot of our farmers have become poor nearby and they, the cost so you profited import. from their poverty I did well it's like the bee did. So, so, so what happened was they they and I've watched this over the years yes yes they started out with this lovely the inputs you're talking about and it, it gave them high yields initially but then it becomes the yield becomes less and less over the years talking about the farm the farms and the cost of inputs keep rising which is what they want to see happening exactly. that is a plan you know it, it's a plan that's why the UIC wants to bring Jamaica back to organic farming but not just regular organic farming um, well managed organic farming the way we do it in the Netherlands where they, re they get mass production but they control all of those issues you're talking about yes. to, to, to pre prevent the kind of problems we're having in the beekeeping industry right now. Yes. All right, I have oh, two have questions it. from online that I have to put to Mr. Sure. Patterson before he goes. Um, in the, while I get the questions, you can wrap up your, your bee appeal. Okay, <laughs> the, uh, it is, it's a Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries celebration of World Bee Day 2022. Uh, and the theme is be engaged celebrating the diversity of bees and beekeeping systems and that's tomorrow Friday May 28th and it's located gonna be located on the front lawns of the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries at Hope Gardens Complex Kingston and it starts at 10 a.m. and it's a free event it is no free. cover charge all right mm. thank you so much for that um, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, we've got to try the, try the beautiful <laughs> punning. All right. Um, I have two questions for you, Mr. Patterson. Big ones. Um, and this is from Taki, very faithful listener of ours from out of the U.S. He says, what do you think of the environment and what are you planning to do about the mining operations Cockpit. that are impacting the environment? And you know the cockpit one is a big one. And I have to tack something onto it. Pardon me for punning your name, Taki. Um, are you in any way hesitant or fearful about revoking licenses and dealing with the fallout Absolutely when you see? Um, right. I believe squarely in ending the mining operations in Jamaica. It is not sustainable. It is contrary to our long-term economic interest. And we need to move away from, uh, f from mining and move to farming. So the extractive industries are done for you. Yes, yes. Now, naturally, if they are listening, and I expect that they are, those who are in favor of doing this kind of work in emerging or developing economies are immediately writing a check for the other guy and Absolutely. say, we've got to make sure that this UIC man don't see the light of day. Absolutely. You're prepared for that? Of course. And in All fact, right. that's why we're going after the middle class. That's why, yes. we're, not, that's why we're jumping. <laughs> we want the middle class to get involved and help mm -hmm. to fund the UIC so that your children, your grandchildren will not suffer the cancerous effect 
of mining and artificial uh, organic material in our farming. We need to make sure we go back to organic farming, stop the mining, and create a healthier Jamaica for all Jamaicans. Mm. <laughs> so you're jumping right. to the next generation. Absolutely. Yes. The Jewish community have done. Yes. Yeah. And then now, Taki again, on the, b the business of education, I tell you the universe is fighting this question. <laughs> there has been like every kind of noise between breeze and bike noise. All right. The education system that needs radical change, he says. What are your views in regard to addressing the social problems? Yes, yes. yes. Will there be a family life program? He's giving you a hint at yes. what he wants to hear. Will there be a family life program, self-actualization, resolving conflict issues, history, etc., as part of the process, catering from kindergarten, basic school, yes. throughout the tertiary levels? I so he has answered it for you, but I reading, guess... He's reading the UIC <laughs> manifesto. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, so that's um, where we're going. Yes. Uh, but most importantly, though, on the education front, we're going to make it an Afrocentric education curriculum. This is very important. We need to give our people a full sense of who they are and the potential for our people as black people. Man, you're just, from, yeah, yes. you're just buttering me up now when you start that the, kind of talk. I wanted to ask you. I'll slip out of your hand at this rate. I wanted to ask you, have you been impacted and influenced by Marcus Garvey? Absolutely. Marcus Garvey is my hero. He is the one Jamaican who, for me, what he has accomplished. Mm -hmm. If you think what Marcus Garvey has accomplished without all of what we have the today, technology the technology and the, yes. Being such a massive UNIA organization mm. to overcome in America as an immigrant, mm -hmm. as an immigrant in America without even citizenship, he was able to move the black Americans to have faith in themselves and to lift themselves up. That's what we need now in Jamaica and globally. So Marcus Garvey is my hero, and um, I've read his books, mm -hmm. uh, I've studied his life, um, and I went to Africa myself mm -hmm. and made sure that I, I went to Ghana, and I was, Ghana has 30 million people, and as God lives, there are 30 million Jamaicans. That's what to mean. I went to Ghana, I went into a community in Kumasi, I lived with them for about a week in a, in a what do you call it now? A, tr a tribal community, community right, right right they don't speak any english right i live with them for a week no english right and we eat together we make joke we laugh just like jamaicans and i'm like they can't speak my language i can't speak theirs but how is this happening <laughs> we just bonded yeah and that was such a transformative experience for me then i went into the inner city of accra mm. and see all the people hustle and how they make things work in a difficult situation I'm like my god this is Jamaica and then I observe something else they actually follow the same system of governance that we do and here's here's the problem the same system leads to the same results hmm. so even though Ghana is a hundred times richer than Jamaica gold mm -hmm. oil mm -hmm. everything they still have the same problems we do because they embrace the same colonial model they have the same model yes and so we now mm -hmm. need to realize that it's not because jamaica is small it's because we're system. under a system that prevents us from realizing our full potential so a uic government is going to relinquish the colonial control in our country and give jamaica back to jamaicans and embrace our african heritage so, so. And all right with our one country. last question yes. and i have to place it because it is from a prophetess yes. What are your plans to tackle this employment, labor drain, and importing employment that the Prime Minister spoke of? I'm glad you brought that up, <laughs> uh, because very shortly the UIC will be hosting a job expo where we're inviting all of those persons who have skills who are unemployed in particular, and we're going to make a presentation to the government of the hundreds of Jamaicans who are skilled but unemployed. We believe that the approach of the government of trying to sell us the idea that they need to import skilled labor, skilled labor mm. is an indictment mm. on 78 years of these two parties being unable to build a Jamaica that can build our own roads, yeah. can build our own hospital, build our own houses, our own houses. and so on. So and we are going to change that. And nature is joining with you because this, yes. the, this is <laughs> like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of All right. is great. Um, yes. 
you could see that you could see that this could continue for a while exactly. uh, let me do the thank yous because we are in the last 10 minutes of the program thank you so uh, much you traveled uh, from saint elizabeth you. you stayed at our club please give us some good reviews online uh, and everywhere else club was perfect <laughs> uh, i enjoyed everything from the food to the welcome to the service a great club i'd recommend it to anyone well uh, thank you so much gentry coming in from the country <laughs> yes yeah, you have you have used it exactly as it was intended all those years ago by the white people who gifted it to us and how they must be turning in their graves not only is a woman sitting and speaking on their lawn because women were not allowed yes. but there's a black man saying black it was perfect yes, <laughs> this is a nice is note on which to end great. yeah Thank you so much, Mr. Patterson. We wish you all the best. And you know we have said that we want to get the word out on anything that is proposing to change some fundamentals in Jamaica. So and whenever you need us, future. when you need us, we are jump here. Into the future, yes. <laughs> future Thank you to stop. all those online who are Omari Jones. Omari, let me remind you that the man said one man, one vote. You have voted five times. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> but to all those who are online um, sharing with us um, we thank you for your input those who are on air I know you miss calling in and giving mr. Patterson a run for his money but I tell you what we will do this again and have him in studio where we take phone calls thank you to the crew and we have two best M best FM family members who came out to say wait they're the marketing people so they're making sure that we're worth marketing I hope we pass the grade Thank you so much, Mr. For producer, us. engineer, and all that you performed this morning. I told you that you would see a one-man band. Yes, and it's uh, <laughs> an excellent one-man band. Uh, yes, I, I take some credit for training him. I think so. Um, yes. First of yes. all, yes. thank <laughs> you. And Boy, Mr. Producer, <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to pass, pass. They don't want to pass. <laughs> <laughs> If he had a microphone, <laughs> if he had a microphone, a for that. but you'll notice he has not cut me off. There you go. Yeah. This is the start of the Morning Connection weekend, so we say have a great weekend because we won't be on tomorrow. Tomorrow morning you'll get to listen to Orit, and I hope Orit have plenty to say about the many things that have been happening. Please stay tuned with Best FM. We're trying to make ourselves indispensable to your life. How you think, what decisions you make. There should be something for you on the Best FM um, radio family. So thank you all. Signing off.